So in this project called Daily Paywall, I uh, was basically stealing uh, every single article news that the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, and The Economist were publishing um, every day, every hour, actually. So at the end of the day, I collected 60,000 pay-per-view articles. Um, uh, so we all know uh, that these are the main financial uh, newspapers uh, out there. And this is how it looks a paywall, if you don't know what it is. So you want to read the news, um, and you can't actually read it because you are supposed to pay, and you are supposed to have uh, just afford it. Uh, so there was, it was the journal, this the Financial Times. It's actually the most uh, annoying sometimes regarding uh, paywalls. And this is uh, the economy, so you can't actually read anything if you don't pay, right? Um, so uh, to break this uh, system, I um, just uh, uh, paid, uh, um, so I uh, subscribed to um, their service, and uh, um, I created a script that automatically was logged in with my account, and uh, every few minutes was just trying to find out all their title published, and uh, uh, store uh, them on my server. So this script was basically running uh, continuously for a year. And uh, then, with all this uh, huge amount of information that I collected, I wanted to make my own financial newspaper. So this is actually the daily paywall uh, that I have also here in local. So this is like uh, a list, uh, in, um, well, endless list of uh, uh, financial um, news, right? Uh, but it's not just about distributing content for free for uh, providing, you know, uh, democratic access to information, but actually the conceptual catch here is that I wanted to pay everyone to read some particular featured article. And then I also wanted to pay journalists that uh, were invited to claim a compensation for what they write. And this uh, system through a crowdfunding uh, model where everyone could basically pay random people to read some particular articles, in a way. Um, so I selected a few articles. These are uh, just a few. Uh, in total, they were eight, nine. And uh, um, you, know, you could actually make money by reading this article, potentially. <clears throat> um, so what, what and why? Um, so it's really about media publishing, right? And consumption, media consumption. So the pay to read became the pay to read schema, a circular economic model in which profit generated from a huge amount of pirated content is invested into forming the public and educating the public about such economic contradiction while offering reward to critical journalists democratically. Um, so this was the concept, that, uh, the thing that I built, right? And then it starts the actual performance. So uh, on December 20th, uh, I sent this press release to 10,000 email contacts. Over the year, I created a huge mailing list and through social media contacts, of course. And then I also printed uh, a version of my own newspaper uh, that was uh, distributed in New York um, and uh, in bookshops. Uh, with those uh, um, eight articles, basically. So every time that they launch a performance like that, uh, somehow um, it happens that I can categorize the reaction and engagement of the audience uh, in these three uh, categories, let's say. Uh, personal reaction, media reaction, and legal reaction is really common. So with this one happen uh, as well, so these are actually a personal reaction, and I was surprised because some people really got uh, these uh, personal. So for example, this is someone writing me back saying, I really like your work, but uh, this is really bad. And it's just like a writer that actually lost her job because of the crisis in the, public, in the publishing industry, right? And someone instead say, fuck you, Paolo, because why are you trying to uh, raise money for your projects? Well, <laughs> sorry, it's not much. Other ones, they just say, oh, this is a great uh, um, idea, and uh, when, do you go going, when, when are you going to pay me, and blah, blah, blah. 
And other ones were saying, what is it legal even to read this article? Uh, is, uh, can, I, can I really use this information? I am allowed to just uh, use your project. And then you have the media reaction that um, is also a kind of a snowball. So it started with an interview and then it went on Wired and then it started to be international um, and uh, translated in several uh, languages. And then you have the uh, legal reactions. Um, and so after just uh, four or five days that the project was published, uh, of course, uh, I started to receive uh, um, um, complaints, or actually season this later, kind of. In this case, it was the Financial Times that um, uh, asked complaint to my ISP, my server, uh, that I was publishing copyrighted material, and so they asked to uh, take down everything. So one day I woke up and I didn't have uh, any control on the domain name, on the data, on the code, everything was basically done. This, uh, gone. The same day, I received also this email from the Wall Street Journal that instead um, uh, say, uh, well, you violated the term and service of, of uh, Wall Street Journal, but we are going to refund you uh, of seven bucks uh, for the you know, days that you will miss from your subscription. So actually, Wall Street Journal are nice. <coughs> so at the end of the day, the performance for um, um, for my uh, uh, concept works out. So um, uh, people were donating money uh, uh, for sustaining the system uh, from one box to 100 bucks. So I raised 400 uh, bucks. And uh, people, of course, wanted to get paid to read these articles, so 500 bucks. But uh, somehow, uh, after... Um, after... Um, waiting that the, 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 the things were more uh, quiet, I asked for receiving uh, more uh, regarding the complaints from the Financial Times. It was interesting. This is actually the letter that they sent to my server, and uh, it says, uh, well, apparently, this uh, digital artist called Paolo Cirio, it's not sure, uh, admitted uh, to uh, hacking the Financial Times authentication system. And it's also interesting, uh, how, he, how they are aggressive in uh, protecting their copyright material. They say that uh, you are not even supposed to share the article via email. So you're not supposed to um, even send uh, a link of the article almost. And they, they start to list a few uh, law, like copyright law, that I apparently uh, violated. So there are like uh, at least five, two from the European Union, one from UK, and one that is international, and, um, and so on. So they were pretty aggressive in uh, their claims. But at the end of the email, I find out that um, actually the Financial Times uh, is actually uh, owned by this company, Person, PLC, that, funny enough, I didn't know any anything about that. So that, for me, was the weirdest thing, because then I could uh, keep researching and investigating about Pers Person PLC, and they find out that they are the owner of the Financial Times and also The Economist, and they are the largest public publisher and education company worldwide. And so, basically, it operates all over the world. But the interesting thing is that they are really pushing data-driven education, and they want to dominate that market. And it has enormous influence in the education in America, in the US, and it is, is leader in testing and online degree. So basically, the same thing that they was trying to do, but they really tried to do that for money and through uh, corrupting the education system. So it is really an evil company, and, <laughs> and has been uh, persecuted and under investigation in uh, several states in US, um, <clears throat> for corrupting public officials and getting um, contracts, basically. And then uh, he's doing a crazy thing about data mining of uh, the students, and uh, it prohibits teachers to criticize it, and so on and so on. Uh, you can really investigate on your own. Um, and uh, yeah, so the interesting thing is uh, this interview that the CEO of Person uh, gave to the Wall Street Journal saying the ability to put content and application together, that will really allow to be the king. In a way, the king is naked now. <laughs> 